All right. Hello and welcome to the overview of rounds four through six in the Stukent Simternship, looking at the uh, introduction to display advertising. Today, I'm going to give an overview mainly of round four, uh, just because it can be a little time consuming to go through all of them. However, the principles of round four also are going to apply to rounds five and six. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I also want to mention that um, of all the rounds that I've had students do over the years, I'll say this might be the most confusing that people run into. And so we're going to put a focus on the display ads specifically, along with some of the other to do's. So we'll jump right into it here. Um, we're on round four. And what I have done is I just skipped the first three and went, went right to round four to focus on the display ad side. You'll see in the assignment section and in the inbox and the notifications, you'll have questions that you have to do. And they want you to optimize all of the landing pages and the search ads that you've done so far. If you're watching this after doing the first three rounds, you'll be pretty familiar with the landing pages for the American Dream, uh, the Backpack, the Messenger, and the Duffel Bag. When you go to campaigns, you're going to see you already have whatever you did back from the earlier rounds. I don't have anything. Um, I did create a display of that campaign that I'm going to go through. But your job is to go through and optimize it um, as well after optimizing your landing page. Now, all of the information that you need about the landing page, if there's any changes, which there really isn't much, um, comes in through the scenario and the, the inbox and all of that fun stuff at the beginning. Now, the important thing here, though, you can also, you, oh, I forgot, you can also change your keywords if you want. That comes in here when the uh, with the keyword research and planning. Now, the next step, though, is display advertising. There's three big things to know about display ads in the Simtrinship, and these generally apply to the real world as well. You know, there's a couple nuanced differences. But first off, um, the display ads that you're going to be developing are for products and landing pages that already exist here in the buoy system. And the reason I'm sharing my whole screen today is because I did want to call attention over to what those are. You get access to these in the beginning. You get, a, I think, an email or something, whatever that little notification is. And they show you all of the information you need about the legacy product line, the OG product line, and the switch product line. Now, I went ahead and created ad groups for three products, one from each. Your job is to essentially look through each product page and decide what, what you're, you know, which ones you're going to do. You can do as many or as few as you want. Um, I recommend three to four. And the key here, though, is finding a product that matches a persona. If you go back to, um, whoops, if you go back to your actual page here, you can pull up your personas here with the resources. Here's your original products and here are your customer profiles. Now, I will say not all of these people perfectly match a legacy product. For example, um, I had trouble matching up and come Raj with a product he was perfect for the uh, first three rounds. He was not one that I spent much time on uh, in round four, at least. When it comes to this, you know, you want to look at their details again. Again, this is all you have. You don't really have anything else on these people. But you may want to also look at the legacy product data to look at the sales. The revenues don't really matter, to be perfectly honest, but one thing you may want to do, and this is the first time I'm saying this, you know, the first three rounds, I didn't think this mattered that this much, but the cost per click is going to be important for once. And we're going to come back to this in a minute. But so what you do is you create a campaign. Um, you can only create one campaign here, one display campaign. And from there, you create your ad groups. I created my ad groups based on, I started, called it the Halloween sale campaign. I didn't actually end up doing any sales. And I don't really recommend that you do either just because you have no control over the product. You have no control over the landing page. These are already built for you. You can't really change anything. And so for consistency's sake, you want to make sure that 
the information that is on these um on the actual products is going to be the same like the the if you say 50% off and they go and it's not 50% off you're going to struggle in terms of your um relevance and you know relevance of landing page so you go over you create an ad group and i'm just i've already created a couple i'm just going to show you um you give it a name i prefer i usually like to you know really it's just one ad group um per uh persona and you give it a default cost per click now you can look at the cost per click in two ways one based on the person so if you go back and look at the people's income it gives you um, average incomes for each person and there's a couple that are below average some people that are average some people that are above average you know you can set your cost per click based on that um i believe it really doesn't matter to be perfectly honest <laughs> um generally the more disposable income they have the the more expensive the product they can afford so the higher the cost per click that you can put that's kind of the my reasoning here now when it comes to audience options you don't have the ability to remarket yet you will in rounds five and six now for now you're going to want to make sure that you match up all of these details with the persona as well as you can there's not going to be, it's not a perfect match one-to-one. -one. For example, City Hopper Sue, she's married, but you don't know if she's a parent. So I like to leave it as unknown. Uh, but then you have, um, I think it's Hipster Mom Cammy or something. And it specifically states that not only is she a parent, but she's looking for backpacks for her daughters. So there you would say yes. Uh, other ones, like I think Up and Come Mirage is single. I think Energetic Jill is single. So you can... You can pretty much say no. I think I left it as unknown for most of these, but um, I honestly don't know if that makes a huge difference. Um, but this is how your display ads get pushed because that leads us to number two in that the second big thing to know about display ads is keywords don't matter. You can do as much keyword research and planning as you want for display ads, but in this situation, you are going based on audience targeting and remarketing capabilities. Remarketing is not available in round four. It will come back in rounds five and six. And that is really uh, something that threw me for a loop at first, because as I was going through it, I thought, okay, I'm going to create all of these keywords. This is a great setup. I know a lot about the product that I'm creating and promoting. And I know a lot about these people now that I've done three rounds, but that's false. You are going based strictly off of interests and audience details. The keywords are just for the updating and re-optimizing of the search ads that you did in the first three rounds. And in this situation here, um, for argument's sake, I'm only, and for kind of to show you an example, I am only working with the display ads. I don't have any search ads that are here. Finally, the third part about the display ads is understanding the creation of how they, like how they work essentially. I created only one ad per ad group, and you can create as many as you want. Um, you can, you know, do however, build it however you want. It's pretty straightforward. You know, you match up the product name and the URL, um, and you can put in whatever headlines you want and how, whatever, whatever descriptions. But here are the keys here. The keys are the long headline needs to be, you need to make, you have 90 characters for that. So I like to put something that is about the benefits. What are the benefits that it provides you? Um, uh, this is kind of, you know, kind of blah, but whatever. Um, the short headlines, I like to, to match up with what the person does, what the persona does. So this is for Day Packer Tom. He does day hiking. He does traveling. And I think he's also a student, but that's also the backpack. The description, you only... Uh, you know, short headlines, you have 60 characters. I did not use even close to 60 characters here. Then in the description, you have 30 characters. You, uh, sorry. The description, you have 90, I believe. Like you have many. I think, what is it? Uh, this is 60, 30, 90. Sorry. You only have 30 uh, characters for the short headline, 60 for the long headline, 90 for the description. The description is more of what you would see on a Google ad. And this is really what I just did is I took the description on the product page and put them in here in some way. So it was more about the features and not the benefits. Now, you again, you can do whatever you want, but the key thing is that the simulation and in real life, um, 
the target is going to be looking for something that they are interested in, something that matches up with them. So the content that lives here in the description needs to be something that the target persona would like. Now, I did that with all three of these, and I went ahead and ran it. Now, the last thing to know, though, is I mentioned this briefly before, is the cost per click. You can set a default cost per click in the campaign, and I, you always set, and in this situation, you're going to set it as whatever you want the very highest one to be for your ad groups. For me, it was $2. I ended up not do, spending $2 per click, but that was the highest. Now, when I went into my ad groups, I looked at each product. Now, when you are looking at the products and here in the resources, you will need, you will notice that here they are for that. They all have different, there's a big range of pricing. So I did the Bowie OG backpack is $80. I then did the Bowie legacy duffel bag. That's $90. And then the switch luggage is 150. That's the most expensive. Now I kind of went, went this long, went this way just because I wanted the most expensive product and I wanted to see, you know, what would, how it would work, how I could get this to work out. And really the critical thing though, is with such a difference in pricing. I mean, you have something in the buoy OG backpack, that's almost half the price. And what I found is really, if you're looking at cost per clicks for each ad group is the lower the cost per click, like the lower the price for the product. I don't have an exact science for it, but one thing I was able to figure out is that, hey, the cheaper, the cost, you can go as low as you want down to a cent. And I, these are not perfect by any means, but like these are not, you know, great. I would actually recommend probably changing them. But what you will find is that um, you can optimize these and change them in the next round. And that's really what it comes down to, because when you see your display ads, you know, your round four is really kind of a test, but in terms of the scores, round four is based, your grade is based on revenue, or at least the simternship will grade you on that. Between your search ads and your display ads, you're trying to reach that $10,000 goal. You don't actually have to reach $10,000. However, you do need to get, I believe, up to about 9000 in order to get all of the points, right? That is the number one method of grading, and that is also going to be how rounds five and six are scored by default. Some courses are going to grade it differently. Some professors are going to grade it differently as well. Um, but by default, that is how it is situated. And that's how uh, students are ranked by default. Now, the common, other common thing I see with students is really the cost per in the cost per click category is making sure that you do differentiate them. Um, it was kind of a throwaway, to be perfectly honest, as a default cost per click in the first three rounds, because keywords, you would set different cost per clicks based on the suggested bid. You'd usually set it within 10% of the suggested bid. That's what I had suggested. In this situation, it's a little bit different. You have to actually think about the products. You actually have to think about their prices and you have to think about their sales. This is where the revenue comes in. Again, there's it's not a science, but what you want to at least think about is look through like I had the legacy I had the um the OG backpack where to go and oh I don't think it actually had it All right so they it looks like they only actually promoted the legacy duffel the legacy messenger and the legacy backpack now they did have what else did they have yeah so they only actually ran ads on these now if you want to use these to help inform your information, you can, but just remember to match up the products correctly. There are three different product lines that you're looking at. Legacy products, OG products, and switch products. The first time I went through this round, I accidentally picked the URL for the luggage carry-on and not the big luggage, and my ad failed as a result. So it's important to really understand the products that you're working with and promoting. Uh, by that same... By that same token, you know, I did the legacy duffel, for example, that was a hard, hard nut to crack for sure. But you'll see how the sales have um, kind of gone up and down over the course of the year and what the clicks are like. And really, you know, in terms of legacies, the backpack is the one that seemed to do the best, followed by the duffel and the messenger. You know, I promoted the duffel. I did not bother with the messenger or the legacy backpack. Again, do what you want with these. It's not really a big thing. It, really, the only thing that this told me 
was uh, not to use the messenger bag. And, you know, that was one that I avoided. But then when you go ahead and run your simulation, you know, you end up with a, a pretty good result. I'm not going to tell you how much I got from these three because then you could just copy what I did. Um, but I did, I definitely would have scored the full points. Um, you know, it's something that I had to work on, you know, at length and also, my, you know, my experience, you know, I, I had an idea what they were going for. But just to review, campaign you're going to be creating is for a display. You want to create ad groups for the different personas, but then you need to pick products that match the personas. Then the content needs to match what the personas are looking for. And the cost per click needs to fat, needs to ma not match, but um, align with the price of the product itself. Ideally, you get an R, a return on ad spend when you're done, close to 1.0. If it's greater than one, then you crushed it. You did a great job. If it's less than one, as long as it's between, I believe, 0.6 and one, um, that's still not bad. It's not great, but you know, it's not bad. Um, anything below 0.6 is where you get into trouble territory. And I believe um, you know, that might happen. So you can create as many ads as you want. But you know, that's just my really quick overview. I wanted to make sure that I got through round four quickly. Rounds five and six, more optimizing. And I'll try to post um, another video here talking about remarketing a little bit more. But I try to keep these short. And um, hopefully this was informative. And if you have any questions, um, you can always reach out to me and I can try to um, help you out as well as I can.